Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. We're live, uh, and it is now time for us to go live. We are live on the air in the city council chambers of Buena Park, California. For those of you who may not have uh, Hispanic leanings or background, the word buena means good. Oral communication? Oral communication. Yes. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the name of this city is uh, Buena Park. That means good park. And uh, it's been my privilege to be here uh, for 27 years uh, here in the city. And we have a great city, and uh, we thank the Lord for it. And uh, we're here live tonight. I'll uh, reverse the camera and take it off me when they get ready to start. Uh, but I'll talk until they start. <laughs> and uh, we have a group of our people here tonight. Uh, and uh, we thank the Lord for uh, them coming, being here, representing uh, not only themselves, but representing our church, and representing the shelter, and representing the ministry, First Amendment right of religious freedom and freedom of speech. And so we're here tonight thanking you for watching. The city council are not all in the chamber yet. I see Mr. Fred Smith and uh, uh, Beth Swift is not here yet. There's Mr. Fred Smith right there in person. Mr. Smith, how are you? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Yeah. I'll shoot some footage back there a little later. In fact, let me just say, I think it's one of this. Since they haven't started yet, whoops. Pick those up, please. Okay, let me see here. Let's see if I can get this to reverse. Whoops. There we go. Okay, here we go. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the famous dais within God We Trust on it. Buena Park, California, Chalice. And uh, the other folks here that serve the city, and the other servants of the city, the ordained men of God, the ministers of the Lord, uh, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the earth. And uh, this is the audience. We've got some of our folks here tonight, different people here from different walks of life. And uh, good evening. Welcome, everybody. Uh, if any of you want to speak, uh, later, there is a white piece of paper up there. You put your name on it and mark oral communications or whatever you want to speak about, but oral communications, and turn it in to the lady up front. And then she'll call your name as uh, it's your turn. And uh, this is the rest of the uh, auditorium here in Buena Park. And they're getting ready to start, so I'm going to sit down and be quiet so I don't interrupt their meeting. But they haven't started. As soon as they start, I'll stop. Mr. Brown has taken his seat now. Mr. Berry has taken his, and Mr. Swift has taken hers, and Mr. Fred Smith is already here, as you saw. And uh, I'm going to take those cards out. Whoops. So we can roll this thing all the way down here. And now, Council Member Smith. I call this meeting to order. Thanks for attending. Today is Tuesday, excuse me. Right, i got to get out of the habit of saying that. Wednesday, November 12, 2014. This is the Buena Park City Council uh, non-regular scheduled meeting. And we welcome you to being part of our meeting this evening. I'd like to uh, ask for our city attorney to report out from our previous meeting. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have five items on the agenda. Uh, items one, two, and three. Um, the council was briefed by.
by the city's negotiators. There was nothing else to report, however. On item four, the council approved joining as amicus in the case entitled State Department of Finance versus Commission on State Mandates. That's pending before the California Supreme Court. Okay, thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Smith? Here. Councilmember Swift? Here. Mayor Cotan Brown? Here. Mayor Berry? Present. Thank you. Uh, we will have our invocation presented by uh, Abe Benna, Director of Human Resources. Uh, that will be followed by our Pledge of Allegiance by our own Chief of Police, Corey Sinek. Please. Please, I am Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening with bowed heads and humble hearts. First, we thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for waking us up this morning in our right mind and protecting us while on our way. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of living in this great country. Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to enter into this place and enter our hearts, and we ask that you lead and guide our decisions in the way that is pleasing in your sight. May the decisions made here be to your glory and to the edification of this community. Lord, we ask that you continue to be with our mayor and the city council. Continue to be with and protect the police chief, the fire chief, and public safety personnel. And we pray for the city employees and the Buena Park community, that you may continue to bless us and provide for us. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> celebrating Veterans Day yesterday, uh, giving thanks to our veterans. Please join me in pledging this great flag that they fought so hard for the freedoms here in this country. Ready? Okay. Begin. Uh, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. at the beginning of the meeting for presentations. We do have a few of those this evening. The first one is uh, by the Rotary International, it is a Rotary, Rotary International Award, excuse me, presented by our Rotary President Dennis Saltz, and that will be presented to our own council member, Elizabeth Swift. So Dennis is here. <coughs> Thank you for the opportunity to address the illustrious city council. I'm always glad to do that. Here we are, we have somebody who is a stellar example of service above self, which is our motto in Rotary. So I have a sign here that says, congratulations, okay? Now, what are we congratulating for? Okay, can you hear me now? Because I have a problem with that, thank you very much. Rotary International is a, is a, is a club of uh, 1.3 million members in 33,000 clubs all over the world. And Rotary's emphasis is service. We have five avenues of service, okay? Often they give an award, Rotary International gives an award for someone who's stellar in a particular area of service. Vocational service, <coughs> club service, international service, <coughs> youth service. And then once in a while. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you to raise it up a little bit. Okay, well, I'm fading out on me. This thing is not working for me. Okay, I'll scoot mm -hmm. over. What can I say? Uh, but occasionally they will pick someone who actually has been stellar in all five areas of service. And that's what this is about tonight. The international president approved this nomination. I approved it at the club level. The district governor. Uh, uh, Captain uh, Jim Paddock approved it, and it went up to RI, and it came back down approved. And what it is, it's an international rotary award for being stellar in five avenues of service, and it's signed by Gary Wang, and he, he signed it in Chinese, in case somebody wants to check it out in Chinese. <laughs> so what I want to ask is that my wife will just give you a little thumbnail on what the avenues of services are, and then <coughs> present it to your board member, and we also have some flowers, okay? And I'm sorry if I, my voice didn't pick up correctly, okay? I apologize for that. Here we go. This is my wife, Christiana. 
Dennis mentioned the five avenues of service. One is club service, and Dr. Swift has been excellent in that vein as club president in the past, and attending the assemblies and district functions and even uh, leadership awards functions and all, many of the meetings that we have. Also, vocational service. She's very passionate, as you know, about literacy and young people as being a former teacher and school board member. And we have our uh, signature project of uh, bags, the bags for moms of newborns, which were, is in the fourth year. She's very supportive of everything and anything that has to do with education and promoting young people. Community service, she has led uh, as an organizer for our Teacher of the Year luncheon. And as you know, she's active with the Fire Authority Board and has supported the Memorial Day program and the project that she started just last year, when a Park Goes to College, is a real blessing and help for college students aspiring to go to college. International service is um, her service as a professor with Hope University. Uh, it, she works with a lot of students that are from many, many different countries. She's such a good will ambassador for our own city here and our Rotary Club. Um, also for the uh, fifth <coughs> avenue of service, which is New Generation, she's been instrumental in our club speech contest, singing contest, working with our two interact clubs and our college level Rotaract club, who are many of whom were involved with the Buena Park Goes to College. So we want to thank and honor Dr. Elizabeth Swift for all these accomplishments. Let's give her a hand. Great award for Dr. Swift, former school teacher, board member, board of education, very active in the community, especially in the area of children and education. And the Rotary is presenting to her. One, two, three. Take one more. One, two, three. Mr. Jake, you good? Go ahead. All right. I, I don't know if you can hear me, but the district governor would be here tonight, except he has to be in Canada at the Pittsburgh Zone Institute. So he was absolutely elated when it was approved by the RI president. And interestingly enough, the RI president's son-in-law and daughter live in Huntington Beach, so we probably will see him around once in a while to see his grandchildren. So I salute Dr. Swift because she is what we call the real deal. The real deal. And Buena Park is better off because of all the things that she has done in the community and it's just a wonderful opportunity for us to honor a lady who is, and I will say it, a great lady. Thank you. And uh, next we have a Distinguished Service Award presented to, uh, excuse me, well, to Captain Gary Worrell. Presented by our police chief, Corey Sanders. So tonight it's my honor, honorable mayor and city council, to present Captain Gary Worrell with our Distinguished Service Award. 
be a recipient of a Distinguished Service Award. So, uh, you have to have done something distinguished on a project or a long-term project, not just one incident. In this particular case, it's Captain Morrell's time to be spent on our SWAT team. Captain Morrell, be, because of your 21 years of continuous support, generosity, and inspiration to the Buena Park Police Department SWAT team, you are presented with this Distinguished Service Award. Your commitment to the SWAT team began on July 20th, 1993, as a three-year veteran police officer when you were selected as an entry team member, member and a grenadier. You served the team in this capacity for seven years until you promoted to the rank of sergeant and became one of two team leaders on the team. Being a team leader gained you another seven years where you led the team through numerous successful undertakings. When you promoted to the rank of lieutenant on July 8th of 2007, you became the team commander, requiring you to make some very intense and poignant decisions for the team. You served as a commander for yet another seven years until April 19th, 2014, when you promoted to the rank of police captain and tendered the team's leadership to Lieutenant Tamara Banks. Only one other commander before you was able to accomplish this honorable achievement of long-standing service. During your 21 consecutive years with the Buena Park SWAT team, you literally gave your blood, sweat, and tears to the team and the department as you participated in, supervised, supervised, and commanded the team in hundreds of operations. You definitely earned the respect and admiration of every member who served under your command. During your tenure, you were instrumental in many beneficial changes to the team from the weapons used, tactics deployed, uniforms worn, the operations budget, and successfully spearheaded the purchase of our team's first armored rescue vehicle, which is out, parked out front this evening for council to take a look at a little later on. <clears throat> because of your leadership and vision, the team is one of the best around. Your selfless dedication to the team has earned you this prestigious award. Congratulations, Captain Borrell, for your contributions to our winter place welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ronald Rodriguez. I've lived in the Buena Park Flower Tribe for over 20 years now with my wife, Margaret, and our kids. I'm a proud executive producer for the 2014 Buena Park Youth Theater winter production of All Shook Up. Buena Park Youth Theater is now celebrating its 35th year of existence. I am also a board member of the Friends of Buena Park Youth Theater, the nonprofit arm of BQIT. As you all know, Ruth Walt, the founder of EPYT, would usually be here to announce and shed some light upon the upcoming production, but she is unable to do so at this time due to her husband Tommy recovering from a recent hospital stay. In her absence, I would like to thank the City Council, first of all, for allowing us to be represented in this forum. 
the Burnham Park Youth Theater, including its affiliated junior performer and the award-winning Spotlight Performer programs, are indeed very fortunate to have such a great, uh, excuse me, to have such great support from various entities. From extremely talented volunteer parents and other family members and friends who give up their time and their skills so willingly, to the many community partners like the Buena Park New Lions Club, Buena Park Women's Club, and others. The amazingly talented cast members themselves, community services supervisor Amani Tolliver, and of course the support of all of the city's Fine Arts Commission and you, the City Council. We would like to thank you all for your kind and generous support throughout the years. About the show itself, All Shook Up is based upon Shakespeare's Twelfth Night and inspired and featuring the songs of Elvis Presley. It's 1955 and in a square little town, a square state, rides in a guitar playing rouseabout who changes everything and everyone he meets in this musical fantasy. So I have you jumping out of your blue suede shoes with such classics as Heartbreak Hotel, Jailhouse Rock, and well, Don't Be Cruel. <laughs> the performance dates are November 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and the following weekend, the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Uh, Friday and Saturday evenings are at 7.30, and Saturday and Sunday matinees at 2.30. Performances will be held at the Buena Park High School Performing Arts Complex, uh, 8833 Academy Way in Buena Park. The ticket prices are $10 for general admission, $8 for seniors and children 12 and under. To purchase tickets or for additional information, please visit BuenaPark.com, BuenaPark, I'm sorry, BPYouthTheater.com. On Facebook, you can search for BPYT Presents All Shook Up, or pay a visit to the beautifully remodeled Buena Park Community Center at 6688 Beach Boulevard, or give them a call at 714-562-3860. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce to you two members of the Buena Park Youth Theater. This is Cameron Rodriguez and Carson Rodriguez. Both Cameron and Carson have performed with BPYT for several years now. Carson even began as a junior performer, including the last time he performed this same play. For this engagement, Cameron has the role of Jim Haler, our heroine Natalie's widowed father. In Carson, is part of, an, of the all-important, extremely talented group of ensemble that this show are required to have a strong dancing and vocal capability. Thank you. Are we going to have any singing? No, I'm afraid not. We're not going to have no singing. Well, I, you know, I definitely want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These guys have to get back, actually, to yeah. rehearsals. <laughs> and we look forward to it. Thank you. We look forward to the uh, actual uh, youth theater performances each year. It was done very well. If you haven't had a chance to uh, be involved or see one of those productions, make sure that uh, you bring some young people out and experience light theater because it's a unique experience for most of them. And that will be held here in Burnham Park. Elvis has left the building. Uh, make sure you do uh, silence your cell phones for the remainder of the meeting. Um, and we're going to move into our business uh, portion of our meeting. Before we do that, I just want to mention, yesterday was um, Veterans Day. I'm sorry for the beat. Um, and thank you for indulging us in showing up on an uh, off day, because we're normally here on Tuesdays. And, 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 and. But before that, a couple days uh, before that, we had an election here in the city of Buena Park. And uh, we had two council members who were re-elected, and a third council member who was elected. We have an empty seat here. We'll be inducting her in very shortly. But I saw her in the audience, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to ask for her to stand so the public can see her uh, on TV. And that, her name is Virginia Vaughn. Her husband, Kenny, I don't believe is here, but I just want to welcome you. <laughs> Call your council and complain later, will you? <laughs> okay, we move on to uh, public comment. Any uh, member of the public may speak on any item on this agenda. Those wishing to speak are asked to complete a speaker identification form located at the council and hand it to the city clerk, which is the lady to my left here. 
The speaker form assists the mayor in ensuring all persons wishing to speak are recognized in order. The speaker's name will be called at the time the item is heard. If comments do not relate to a specific item on this agenda, they will be taken collectively under oral communications, which will be at the end of this agenda. And we'll be calling for those under uh, oral communications that are going to be asked for. It. And speakers are always limited to no more than five minutes. Um, and you're welcome to fill out the form. The form is back there and the wooden podium as you come in through the door. If you want to fill one of those up, you're welcome to do so. Uh, we move on to our uh, business items. Our first uh, item is our consent calendar. And these are uh, collectively items uh, 1 through 10. Our consent calendar includes uh, approval of minutes, resolutions approving claims and demands. That's our checkbook register. Item 3 is uh, commission committee appointments and resignations. And if you don't have an agenda, uh, we have those as well when you come in. That's what I'm reading from. Item four is final payment for 2012-2013 wheelchair ramp installation. Item five is final payment for the annual pavement rehabilitation. We've done a great job rehabilitating our pavement. Item six is water bill insert for the upcoming uh, city luncheon that we'll be talking about probably in the very near future. Item seven is resolution honor, uh, authorizing execution of state standard agreement for housing uh, re housing related programs, HRP grant. I did that one. Item 8 is um, accept grant funding from the Target Corporation. Item 9 is resolution approving the annual measure M2 expenditure report for the City of Winter Park. And item 10, which I think is more than half of our agenda tonight, um, approval to add new member agency to existing joint power agreement for the Greater Law and Justice Agency for Orange County. And it's got a long acronym. Uh, that is our consent counter, all 10 items. Uh, if there are no items pulled independently, we'll accept the motion for approval. Do we have approval for all items and a second? Roll call, please. Smith? Yes. Cliff? Aye. Brown? Aye. Barry? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we move on to new business. Item number 11, uh, professional services agreement, and we have a report by Jim Byrie for Doug Redow. <coughs> I don't know your title, but I have one. Senior management analyst, and it got me three ice cream today. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor and City Council. Um, this item tonight is a, uh, a variety of emergency operation planning uh, PSAs that we receive grant funding for. Just to, to give you a quick background, if you recall back in 2008, there were uh, significant wildfires throughout California, and this resulted in a FEMA declaration of disaster, and, this, and that ultimately resulted in what is called the 2008 Disaster Recovery Initiative which was a program to help cities recover from the fires and so forth. Uh, Buena Park, we didn't actually uh, encounter any fires, but we were authorized to get grant funding to do preparations for the next disasters. And so what this meant was that in March 2012, the City Council submitted a grant application to the CDBG. The money is ultimately funded from FEMA down to the state level through CDBG, as we're used to getting money from. And we submitted the grant in March 2012 for a total of $250,000. And that breaks down to uh, $145,000, what we call a local hazard mitigation grant, and I'll explain each of these later. Uh, $55,000 for the emergency operations plan, $35,000 for a hazardous, material, hazardous materials assessment, and then $10,000 for a water vulnerability assessment, and then $5,000 for miscellaneous uh, administrative costs like duplications and all that kind of stuff. We were notified last year that we did receive the grant. At that time, the mayor uh, signed the paperwork, we, form we formalized it, and then during the past year, we've been working with our CDBG, CDBG grant manager to develop the RFPs to put these things out to bid, and ultimately in June 2014, we did put them out to bid, we had eight consultants uh, re respond to our RFPs for the local hazard mitigation plan and for the emergency operations plan update. Those two we combined into one RFP because they're similar products. And then we had a separate RFP for the hazardous materials assessment. We received one bid for one proposal for that. And then we had uh, a separate RFP for the water vulnerability assessment update. And we had one, pr one proposal for that. So uh, during the past couple of months, we have reviewed the proposals that came in. Uh, we had a group of city employees participate in reviewing them and interviewing the consultants. This included Lance Carnes from PD. He's our emergency planning expert. And Lance, I, uh, he's here as a resource. I, can, I can't do this nearly as well as he can. He's, he's simply amazing on this. 
um, if we have any more questions about some of the details on it. Uh, so uh, as a result of the reviews of the proposals and the interviews of the consultants, we've selected three consultants to receive the grant funding to do this work, and so we have three PSAs tonight. So the first one is for the local hazard mitigation plan slash emergency operations plan update. And so over the years, we've all seen the big City of Warner Park Emergency Operations Plan. This has had a number of updates and versions over the years. We never really successfully made it what it needs to be. Although we tried, we've been working on it. That, with the local hazard mitigation plan, we recommended that it be awarded to emergency planning consultants. The total amount of that award would be $200,000. As I said, 145,000 is for the local hazard mitigation plan, and then 55 is for the update of the emergency operations plan. So we don't presently have a hazard mitigation, a local hazard mitigation plan, and I can just briefly tell you what that is. Um, it's, too late, it's too late for that, actually. Go ahead. <laughs> it's too late because it's, it's beyond brief. He's going to bring Lance. Up. I'll make it super brief. <laughs> so, the local hazard mitigation plan looks at things that could happen in Buena Park. We know that we're prone to earthquakes. We have water issues. We <laughs> have uh, energy problems at times. We could have civil disturbances. We could have we have gas, gas pipelines that flow through the city. We have a high pressure fuel line that goes down the I-5 freeway. We look at things like that. We 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 um, study them. We attempt to mitigate them, we come up with proposals or plans. If there's something we can do to fix it now, we come up with proposals to fix it now. And at a minimum, we look at it and recognize it's there, and so that when something does happen, we have a, we've already examined it, studied it, and we hopefully have a plan of how to deal with it during the emergency. So that's, in a nutshell, a hazard mitigation plan. It's much more than that, but that's basically it. We all know that the emergency operations plan is basically our guideline how we're going to respond in an emergency. It, it goes into the, um, what we call the incident command system, ICS, that's the SEMS and the NIMS, we've had multiple training classes on that kind of stuff. In essence, it, uh, it once again mitig mitigates the effect of hazards, it prepares for emergencies to, pre to preserve life, minimize damages and loss of life, uh, provides necessary assistance, establishes a recovery system during and after an emergency, it's basically the footprint of the how, what, who, where, why of how we do with emergencies. That's this guy here. So the proposal that those, that those two projects be awarded to, to emergency planning consultants. And we have representatives from these consultants here if you have any more questions about them. The second uh, PSA would be for developing the hazard materials assessment. We don't presently have a hazard materials, hazardous materials assessment. And we're recommending that that be awarded to Constant and Associates in the amount of $27,094. And so we have grant funding for 35. The proposal came in under the grant for 27,094. In a nutshell, the hazardous materials assessment identifies the locations, types, quantities of hazardous materials in the city. It's going to look at above ground fuel tanks, underground fuel tanks, at all the different gas stations, um, industries, city yard and police department own and operate them. It's going to look for the locations of the really nasty stuff that's, that's uh, regulated by the Department of Toxic Substances Control. It's going to look at, once again, oil and gas lines, oil and gas sites, waste and recycling sites, and industrial sites. It's going to assess the potential impacts to both humans and property of any of these hazardous materials being released. And so, it, once again, it's, it's a method of us doing the pre-planning to know what to do if something terrible happens. All that information we share with the Orange County Fire Authority, and it promotes, you know, a more effective emergency response. And then the final PSA would be for the updating the water vulnerability assessment. Now on this one, when the grant was done two years ago, we made an estimate as to what work would be entailed in doing this. And that resulted in the estimate of the amount of money we wanted to ask from DRI to get to fund this. And we did not ask for enough money. The, the one proposal we, that we had come back was $33,450. So we, we, have we will be receiving $10,000 in the grant to do this. And so our recommendation is that we would use uh, money that's currently budgeted in the water fund for the business plan. 
the, to offset the cost of this proposal. The reason that it came in to be so much more is because we underestimated what it would entail in doing a water vulnerability assessment. When the, the initial one that we did was back in 2004, it resulted from 9-11, from and it was, a, it was a nationwide requirement that all water agencies had to do this, and essentially it looked at terrorism events and uh, developed pr proposed activities in the event that we had water terrorism. Somebody poisons the water system or somebody blows up the water well or something like that. So it was a very focused look at water vulnerabilities at a very small part of what could potentially happen into a water system. The proposal that came back from Triad Consulting is much more comprehensive looking at all factors of operating water utility. For instance, uh, we look at the physical facilities that we have. We have eight water wells in the city. We look at how they are secured, how people can get into them. Can they climb with a fence with a ladder? Can they throw a bomb in there and blow it up or whatever it might be? We look at the operations of our radio telemetry. We can operate our wells. We can look at what they're doing through computers and through phones. And it looks carefully at the availability of people to get into that system with a computer and to take it over or disable it or do something else. It's a much more comprehensive security look at how we operate. And so we recommend that, that, that we do award that, that PSA. Once again, in the amount of 33,450, 23,450 would be coming from the business plan funding in the current water budget. Each of these uh, PSAs were reviewed by the city attorney. In addition, they were reviewed by our grant manager at CEDG. Um, we have to go through a very formal process of making sure that it all complies with their paperwork requirements and so forth. And it has been. And with that, I would recommend that, that this is the recommended action. And like I said, we have representatives from the companies who want to talk about anything else and any questions you might have. Questions from staff? Yes, I have talked to uh, staff for the week, and I uh, <coughs> talked to them about this. And so I, we have to move forward to protect our citizens and make sure that we are the best protection possible. So thank you for putting this all together for us. Just a comment that I, I looked through and looked at the background of these individuals, especially in the triad, well, actually all of them, their, their training, their experience, it was really quite remarkable. I noticed one of the gentlemen in the triad corporation has written a book called Managing the Insider Threat, No Dark Corners, which is a strategy, and I thought about buying that book, and then I saw the price quite. Quite <laughs> I wonder if we could maybe get one of those. On Amazon. <laughs> we might find a copy, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I was going to say, even on Amazon, it was a little pricey for me. But, um, they only printed like three or four of them, so they're high value. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, the, the used copies are even $55. Wow. But uh, I was just really uh, amazed at the uh, quality of. Uh, companies that are yeah, they have some very interesting experience. All of them do. That, like I said, we... But you know what? It's important for us to stay outside of our little sheltered box that we have here in Buena Park and <laughs> be really prepared. So I'm quite impressed. Thank you. Uh, Doug, it seems like the hazardous materials um, would be a, a great overlap with the Orange County Fire Authority who already does inspections. Are they... Do they have a safety plan that you know of? That well, actually, we will be uh, getting all the information we can from them and utilizing all of those resources. And so, and but in addition to that, uh, what this also is doing is uh, kind of from a city of Buena Park perspective, really focusing in on what could potentially impact us, including things that might be in Fullerton, La Palma, Cerritos, Anaheim, and, and Cyprus. And so, really, where OCFA has a countywide perspective, we're really concerned about. You know, something may happen in Fullerton, it's going to come this way at the airport. You know, and so, uh, yes, it does use, utilize the stuff of OCFA. Yes, it overlaps some of that. Um, but it really concentrates on what we're going to do as an agency and how we're going to prepare, prepare for and respond to it. Right next door to us, we now have high-pressure natural gas fuel tanks. Right. You know, arguably 200 yards away. Yeah. You know, so things like that have a very local impact on us that, you know, concern us much more than it might concern Orange County Fire. And it is much wiser to be proactive about these things and wait and see what happens. I don't think uh, the public really uh, um, appreciates, or it's not appreciates, uh, they're just not aware of things. Yeah, they're not aware of the details and the, and the, the work that goes into kind of managing these systems. And so 
your presentation, I think, will convey that message pretty well. Well, not only that, but each of these grants require significant public participation. So all of the proposals that came back include focus groups, including uh, from throughout the community. And so we'll be looking for people to, to uh, participate on our focus groups, uh, lots of volunteer support, and that's, uh, that's simply a part of the process. It, this isn't going to be done at City Hall. This will be done with community input from businesses, employers, <coughs> and so forth. Great. Thank you. Just got a ton of information. You mentioned the high pressure fuel line along the freeway. I thought that was abandoned and filled with inert gas after they uh, closed down the Air Force fueling facility in Norwalk and El Toro was closed. I think there's still one that goes to John Wayne Airport. Um, I'm not aware that this is there. We've always believed that it's still there. We'll certainly investigate on this. That's what I would inform And make sure exactly what it is. Yeah, I just wanted to share. But in addition to that, we have we have pipelines that go down the streets, you know, from the oil pumping facilities and stuff like that. So there's lots of points. We'll know when this report's done. Then. We'll certainly know, yes. Yeah. You don't know what year that was, do you? 35 years ago. And we're still a member of the JPA. Okay. I know we have one going down Mount Avenue. Yeah. Year. It's posted, you know. All right. Well, we have... Uh, I'll make a move to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Brown. <coughs> Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Smith? Yes. Brown? Yes. Smith? Aye. Barry? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. I have a motion to approve in the submittal of the Malvern Avenue, Captain Avenue, the Woodward Regional Traffic Simulation Project with the city's authority to the Orange County Transportation Authority for funding under measure M2, which is the gas tax, comprehensive transportation program staff report by Dennis Barnes. Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. The recommended action is to repeat for the right is one to adopt the resolution approving the middle of the Melbourne Avenue, Chapman Avenue Quarter Regional Traffic Synchronization Project with the City's Affordable Center to OCTA for funding under the competitive measure M2. Transportation Funding Program and number two, approve the City of Fullerton to act as the lead agency for this project. <coughs> and number three, authorize the Public Works Director to sign any necessary documents that may be required as part of, for this project. The purpose, as stated, is to support the City of Fullerton as a lead agency. Uh, this uh, project will assist the City in accomplishing in the City's uh, master plan for the IPS improvements in Boynton Park. Some background information. On August 11th of this year, the OCTA issued the call for projects for the OCTA measure M2, and it's referred to as the Regional Traffic Signal Synchronization Program, the RTSSP. They also include the Arterial Pavement Management Program, the Regional Capacity Program. It's important to note that the City of Buena Park uh, has met all the requirements of the Measure M, uh, as stated for Measure M, and we're certainly eligible to apply for grant funding. And the overhead that's shown on the display at this time, it gives the overall project limits uh, for the project. There are a total of 40 intersections. It starts at the, on the west end at the intersection of Alondra and La Mirada. It continues eastward on La Mirada, becomes the Melbourne Chapman Corridor, continues east, eastward until we end at the intersection of Orange Thorpe and Chapman in Placentia. Um, as stated, there are three agencies that are participating, um, Boyd Park, Fullerton, and Placentia, and Caltrans. Out of the 40 intersections, uh, Boyd Park has seven out of the 40. Of those seven, we maintain six of those uh, traffic signals, and there are three Caltrans uh, signals within that group. Uh, phase one of the project includes the preparation of new traffic signal timing plans, which have been optimized, will be optimized for traffic signal flow, Hardware and software upgrades, uh, new signal controllers and related assemblies, telecommunication equipment, new fiber optic cable installation in Boynton Park, mounting to 3,000 feet, uh, and a new management uh, video server that we installed in the TMC as well as some other software upgrades. Phase two of the project includes continued operational support of the quarter for two years following implementation of the new signal timing and completion of phase one. Um, the proposed uh, resolution before you is, is required as part of the submittal process, and it also should be noted that the city attorney has reviewed and approved 
a resolution. With regard to budget impact, the total cost estimates performed to identify improvements in the city of Boyden Park is approximately $496,515. Uh, if the grant is approved, we'll have a 20% match, which would amount to a contributing amount of $99,303. However, since there's one Caltrans intersection within our project limits, Caltrans will provide in-kind services as a part of the project, which will reduce our cost by $5,000 down to the amount of $94,303. Uh, after the, the grant is uh, approved, we'll have a more exact estimate and we'll put the project out to bid. Uh, there are adequate funds in our traffic signal improvement account, uh, so there's adequate funding. I'd just like to mention that the overall project that we're going to participate in, we're going after is $2.7 million. And that concludes my report, and I'd be happy to answer any questions the council may have. Uh, how many more uh, intersections do we have to actually go on the synchronization plan uh, as far as uh, major thoroughfares? Um, well, as, uh, just for the record, presently we were completing the Valley View TSSP project. We also have the Knott Avenue project, which I've authorized the purchase of equipment that's underway there. Um, and so now we're doing the uh, Melbourne Chapman project. Next year we're eligible, if we go back, we can apply for grants to redo Beach Boulevard as well as La Palma. And OCTA has asked my interest in participating with Cypress in doing uh, Lincoln Avenue as well. Okay, so we're got just about, we're, we're on the downhill now. Yes, we're on the downhill. And then it's really a big benefit to the city of Buena Park is because like you know, we're putting in $100,000 for we're receiving over $400,000 in upgrades that are presently not in our budget. Well, can you explain the, the room they're actually going into and the monitoring we'll be able to do to this new equipment? Um, yes. Uh, on Melbourne Avenue there, we, uh, we have a um, copper that's been installed, aerial copper along that route. We'll be installing what they call a, a video or encoder, which will convert those signals and transmit it over the, you think of the copper wire down to the Dale-Melbourne intersection. I'm bringing all the way back. We have a, four hubs within the city. Uh, this particular project will transmit all that information, traffic signal time data, as well as the camera surveillance at several intersections, down to our hub at the intersection of Artesian and Stanton. And from there, we hop over to Beach Boulevard. We have fiber optic cable running down Beach from Artesian down back into City Hall. So, in other words, we can actually, we have a problem, we can actually take a look at it on our TV cameras and try to solve the problem from here and or know what to do with what type of problem it that is. is. That is correct. And in fact, right now, presently underway with the City of Fullerton, we have the Commonwealth Project, and they are providing upgrades at three intersections and installing new cameras as well on that route, which will be tied in back into the TMC and allow us to do problems over in that area of the city. Thank you very much. Any other questions? No, I, I think you touched upon it, but I'll do it again. Um, the, Orange, the voters in Orange County approved Measure M2, which is a gas tax to support clients. What is it? Yeah. Sales tax. I'm sorry. Thinking of gas tax. <coughs> uh, actually, we were talking about gas tax earlier today. I apologize. Uh, sales tax. Um, and that money is used countywide. And this is one of those projects that we're submitting for a grant approval so that we don't have to spend all the money. It's pooled money from around the county. We only have to put in about $100,000 or $95,000 of our money, but we may gain, we gain back over $400,000 in benefit in terms of equipment and upgrades. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right? Move to second. Move to second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Brown? Yes. Smith? Yes. Swift? Aye. Barry? Yes. Motion carried, 4-0. Thank you. Okay, the next item is a public hearing item, and that cannot be heard before 6 p.m. And uh, according to the clock in the back there, we have about uh, 10 minutes or so. So I think that would be a good time to take a break. Is there anything you want to suggest? The public hearing will likely be a very lengthy item, so I would suggest a break at this time. Okay. Great. We will recess. <coughs> Thank you. All right.
right, ladies and gentlemen, there is a 6 p.m., which is in about 11 minutes from now, 6 p.m. public hearing. And because it's been scheduled for a public hearing and the public's been invited, they cannot do the meeting before the public is supposed to be here. So the meeting will uh, be adjourned at this time uh, for about 10 or 12 minutes, and then they'll be back. And so we'll go off the air at this point and uh, say, come back to see us in about 12 minutes.